Look at this absolute destruction. Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, smacking you about with some more AOE 3DE content and we are back with Aztec. It's been a very, very long time since I've done any sort of content for Aztec and I was inspired by one of Len Len Lenner's videos. If you don't know who Len Len Lenner is, he is predominantly a Twitch streamer but recently come over to the YouTube side and is starting to make some videos of some really awesome casts and I picked one of his videos the Aztec OP strat video and I thought you know what I'll give it a go and this is my second attempt the first attempt my wireless keyboard bugged out and I couldn't use any of my hotkeys and I basically just walked my army into the enemy army which was unfortunate but this is insane this game so without further ado let's go ahead and let's click play now this is all centered around the Warrior Priest Boom. Now, before, when I used to play Aztec, I used to always play them as a rush civilization. So, you know, you know how they work, um, Aztec. Normally, when you're an Aztec, when you're against an Aztec opponent, they will normally try and rush you with some sort of timing with Slingers and Coyotes. And they'll put a forward war hut out and all that sort of stuff. But this is a little bit more passive and it's a good build up and it's a really good sort of timing attack. Now, all of these keywords are my favorite things about this kind of play style. This is why I like to play Aztec, of course. This is why I like to play Inca and also India as well. It's, it's that sort of age two eco boom, that scaling that's kind of insane. You know, when you have a ridiculous amount of economy, um, you can just create so many units, you can get so many shipments out. And it's all about investing in the early point of the game to try and make sure that you have the dividends for the later, get, later part of the game. So the only downside with this build, and I'm going to let you guys know now, is you are open to rushes. Now, there's ways of dealing with the rushes, and um, that is obviously varying on your skill and, and how well you are doing it. I'm not the best at defending because I'm normally the aggressor. This is a bit more of a defensive sort of build early, but then, as I say, when you get around the eight, nine minute mark, it starts to ramp up a little bit. So let's have a look at what I'm doing. So I'm building a community plaza, two houses here with my starting wood, and I'm going for my first card, which is the three villager card. And I'm going to show you the deck here. I will obviously um, post it or put it on the screen a lot easier for you to see, but this is the deck that I'm using. And I'll, uh, I'll showcase it a bit easier for you so you can see everything. But essentially, um, we're pretty much mirroring uh, Len Len Lenner's video. So I will link that video down below. And I think it was Brown Sound who played it. Um, I think he's recently changed his name to Mexico uh, is a cool civ or something like that. Uh, but he's well known for playing Aztec. And he's one of the ambassadors for Aztec that I like to watch. And um, yeah, so without further ado, let's just have a look and see what I'm doing. We have a look at our opponent on the bottom left here, Everett. I think I've played this guy before and we are playing around the mid 1200s uh, ELO wise. I have dropped significant ELO. So um, yeah, I was around 1330, 1340 and I've dropped to around 1240, 1230. So a bit rough at the moment. Uh, that was because I was playing Mexico and I decided to give them a break a little bit because the patch has sort of messed them about quite a lot. So all we're doing here is we're just essentially just getting our food and we're getting into age two. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going for a fast age up. Now, some people say that you shouldn't. Some people say it's best to go for the slower age up to get your uh, war hearts and then save the faster age up. But what we're going to be doing, we're going to be getting uh, this card right here that will enable us to age up twice as fast if we need to in age three so that's why we're using the uh, cow macaque card if we need to i think that's how you pronounce it probably not but this one's an interesting one and what you got to do you got to make sure to select this card when you get into the next age so that's why i'm holding it off right now don't go ahead and select it because if you do you will age up twice as fast for your age one to age two and you don't want to do that you want to save this for your age two to age three so make sure that you don't select it so all we're doing we're pretty much just getting that 800 food and there we go we've gone straight in with the messenger and that's when i go ahead and get the cow because now it will be applying to the next council member that i pick which is your age up option now what you want to do is you want to keep maybe four or five people on food just for villager production when you get into the next stage and you want to move the rest over to the community center and you want to start getting um xp because you want to really get XP quick so you can get the three warrior priest card. And then you're going to obviously then have uh, you'll have 
five warrior priests in total because this card gives you a warrior priest. It says there, delivers one warrior priest. You have one to start with and um, you're going to be trying to get to 10 warrior priests. That's the maximum. Once you've got 10, um, you can uh, you can take villagers off. There's the warrior priest. That was a misplay there. Should have come out the other side, but it's fine. Um, mistakes that I made here. Uh, I lost my explorer really early, so really do not try and do that. You can bring him back. It's not the end of the world, but it's just better if you don't lose him. So I accidentally lost him. But I did secure a really nice treasure, by the way, that was around here. And that was a hit points percentage upgrade. And you really want that because your Aztec Explorer is amazing. He's already super tanky. He gives you an XP aura. So if your units um, deliver the kill and your Explorer doesn't, you get extra XP. And there is a upgrade in the community plaza very cheaply that you can get that will double the amount of XP that your troops get. So it's really, really good. And that is another thing that will allow you to get your cards out ridiculously fast. Because this is what this build is about. This is why you do the Warrior Priest Boom. It's not only to get cards out quickly, it's to also get the War Dance as well, which will give you over 20% attack increase to all units, which is insane. So you can see, so I do something a little bit different here to the video that I've mentioned from Len. And um, I, I think if I keep all my villagers on here all the way to 10, I think that's a little bit too greedy. So what I do is once I once my three warrior priests come out, my three warrior priest card, which was this one here, once that's come out, I then pretty much move all my villagers off and I, and I, leave, okay. I leave the five warrior priests to to get the next one out because it's going to take every 38 seconds. Now, I don't know whether that's the best thing to do. I guess it does delay the max warrior priest, but that's what I do. I think what I do a little bit later is I start to task my next villagers that are coming out. Yeah, I start to task them on the community plaza. But all you need to do really here is just keep gathering food. You're going to need to gather food because there's a big button in your TC and the big button is your um, you get Jaguar Prowl Knights. You get four, I think it's four Jaguar Prowl Knights. Um, my five villager card has just come out. And this build is also quite good against people trying to rage you, which is perfect because that big button in the TC is amazing. The Jaguar Prowl Knights are really good at cavalry and heavy infantry. So any heavy cav, heavy infantry, they're really good. They've recently had a buff to increase their movement speed. So they can pretty much sit in your base and you'll be okay. If you do get into an even worse position, there is a, on the community plaza, you can switch the dance to create these warriors that, that are ranged. So they're basically militiamen, essentially, and they can just keep spawning for free. And that is another way that you can do it. And also, as a last resort, your warrior priest can actually also get involved because they do 15 hand attack and they've got 360 HP, so they are quite tanky. Anyway, you can see here I'm moving a couple over to wood and that is just because of my population. So I want to make sure that I don't get pop cats, but also what I want to try and do is get a war hut. Now, there's a slight difference that I've done here compared to the original video again. And what Brown Sound was doing is he waited for the 700 wood shipment, you know. But what I've done is I've delayed that a little bit. I haven't gone as greedy on the warrior priests and instead I'm going to be chopping for the war hut. I don't know whether this is a better thing to do. It worked out for me in this game. I guess it just depends on how comfortable you are and how greedy you want to be. Because, you know, the thing is, if you want to get to 10 Warrior Priests quickly, you've pretty much got to have 10 villagers sat on there for quite a while until you get 10. Once you get 10, you move them off and then you can uh, basically task them to XP. Um, you can see we've got nine now. We're going to get a final one, and there it is. So look, bang on seven minutes, I've got ten warrior priests. And that's not bad. Of course, people can easily attack you before seven minutes, but we've got to try and have a good defense and see if we can hold. That is the main thing. But we were lucky in this game. We didn't get any sort of rush. And this is a really good thing. A lot of people who play against Aztec always think that you're going to rush. They think that, ah, uh, it's an Aztec player. Nine times out of ten, he's going to put a forward war hut and he's going to rush. So what your opponent will do is they'll play really defensively. And this is what you can see here. So Everett's playing here and he's obviously reacted and thinking that I'm going to I'm going to rush. If we have a look at his vision, he uh, he can't see much at the moment. He's obviously has access to my deck so he can see my deck. But he's got basically 15 musks just sat right on the hunt here 
because he's expecting, no doubt, some sort of coyote runners or, or something like that to come in and raid. But that's not what we're doing. So it really throws off your opponent and it, it gets them to, to react. And here's my uh, 700 wood coming in now. And I've got another shipment. Now, this is the great thing. We've now got our 10 warrior priests. They're on full full sort of um, XP mode. And look at that, 11 XP a second. That's absolutely insane. Just think about that, 11 XP a second. A standard church, I think, brings it brings in 1 XP a second or maybe 0.7. I, I can't, can't remember. But that's basically like 10 churches. That's that's insane. That's absolutely insane. So we are receiving XP like a mother trucker right now. And also we've got that upgrade on our war chief that means that we get that extra XP when our units take down enemies. So what we want to do is we kind of want to, as soon as we can, start to get out there when we've got a force and start to reap some more of that XP. And you can see now my 700 wood coming in has allowed me to also get uh, two war huts down, some houses, and also we're going to start to get some market upgrades. I built that market a little bit earlier. I'm not too sure. I guess you could maybe wait until the 700 wood. It's entirely up to you. I managed to kill one of his uh, scouts there. And uh, now we're just getting unit shipments. You know, the, the, the hard part is done. The boom is done. We've, we've managed to get through the boom unscathed which is great if this happens to you this is brilliant because now it's all about military so it's like you can get your slingers you can get your spearmen and you can start to get whatever i tend to just train coyote runners from my war hut and then i get my spearmen out here i get my slingers sorry out here and then i go for spearmen but it completely depends on your opponent and what you think they're going to be making you might want to get spearmen out earlier it's entirely up to you you can see here market upgrades are now coming in which is awesome and now we have eight slingers on the way. And after playing this game, I just had a great time with it. This actually broke my loss streak, which is really awesome because I was getting really down in the dumps with Age of Empires 3 recently. And I was just getting really upset about Mexico and I just couldn't make it work. I tried a bit of Spanish and I just didn't like the full FF. I'm, I'm an Age 2 player. I love, I love playing in Age 2. I love prolonging the fight in Age 2 and then making the decision to to get into h3 whenever i want to but we can see here this is the perfect position so i can see here on my vision i can see he's moving his musks around he's going to try and take my wood line out here uh, a couple of cav has come in he actually missed those three vills i spotted the cav i move i move my jaguar prowl knights over to the right side to deal with the cavalry we have a quick look at the hand attack here look they're good against cavalry double bonus 38 damage a swipe which would be absolutely amazing and now if we come over to here this is the ultimate fight. This is so satisfying. You're going to love this. Any, any Aztec players are going to absolutely enjoy this. So let's just clarify. We have increased damage to all units of 21%, which is absolutely insane. This is a huge amount of bonus damage, and it's something that no other Civ can really get like that. So that's insane. And now we've got our Slingers. We've got 27 Slingers, okay, against about 30 Musketeers. 30 musketeers walked in and we've got 27 slingers and a few coyotes. And just bear in mind how cheap these slingers are. Just bear that in mind. And also that we got these from two cards. Let's do it. And look at this. Look at this. Absolute destruction. Blurp. Birds. Birds are flying by and that's it. It's because the slingers have such high fire rate and they got low damage. It makes them a really efficient unit to trade. And that is the end of the Musketeers. And there's a couple of Cav coming in, but it's not going to be enough. My Puma Spearman Pop, that's another card that I've got because cards are just coming in. And what I suggest that you do is always, always change, always be really hot on changing your community plaza. That's something that, that takes some time. I'm a little bit rusty here. I probably should have quickly switched it over to XP because if you're not fighting, don't use it. You know, switch it back over to XP. And then what I suggest, if you are running out of um, cards, you might want to put it on the fertility, which increases the rate of your units coming out. And now I'm getting the Coyote Combat, which is going to give them 20% HP and 10% speed. On top of that, they've got the 21% when we war dance. And um, yeah, this is going to be a bit rough now for Everett. He's only got about 15 musks. He is going to call the uh, militiamen, I believe. He's actually getting into age three here. So he did. he did a pretty good... To be fair, he did a um, he did a pretty good semi FF. You know that was a not a bad semi FF. He opened up with about forty musks, and then off the back of it, he got into H three. But he he sacrificed and lost too many units now, and now it's 
oh, we've, we've got to push him at this point. At this point, you have to push. You know it's it's in your best interest to really contain him, lock him down, push and win the game. Because if you just sit back and just get more units and just wait, you're just giving the French more of an opportunity to start getting higher tier units in, in age three, which will not be as good for you. Now, what I could do in this position as I'm attacking, I could actually go and get now a gold shipment after after the uh, after the Coyote combat. I can get a gold shipment. That's probably what I would do. Secure a gold shipment, get 600 gold, and then get into age three. And you'll get into age three even quicker. You don't need the fast age up for age three because you have that card that we use, which was the Kalmakak card, which increases, it doubles the uh, age up speed. So think about that. And here we go. These slingers here are just going to do an amazing job of just trading. Look at this trade. This trade is just beautiful. Uh, even with, we've got, um, we've got some of the militiamen here. But it's not going to be enough. And what I did is I sneaked a couple of coyotes round to the left side. I actually missed his uh, CDBs there. That was unfortunate. I didn't spot that. I didn't spot that either. I probably... Uh, no, I didn't. So that was unfortunate. But I just decided to take down um, a few of them here. And even though they're CDBs, they are really going down quickly. Uh, the coyotes are doing a great job. We've wiped out everything. The spearmen and the jaguar prowl knights have really high siege. So they're a really good unit to use against buildings. And of course, we've got the good old increasing the damage to all units. It doesn't increase siege, I don't think. I think it just increases your uh, your attack damage, but I'm not entirely sure. But there we go. And then next card, we're going to be getting five coyote runners. I probably shouldn't have got this card. It was kind of pointless. I probably should have just gone for the 600 gold. And then I should have started to get into H3, I think. But look at that. Beautiful. TC going down. We're just, we're just completely going into the TC. All the CDBs are there. And, um, yeah, it's complete carnage. Absolutely beautiful. Look at those slingers go. Look at their, look at their, their range is impressive as well. Like a, like a 16 range is, is really, really good. And their fire rate as well is amazing. And we have more coyotes coming in. And this is pretty much it, guys. This is it. This is it for Everett, I'm afraid. But, I mean, I, I basically use the coyotes now to just scout around because... You know, you've got to make sure that they don't start rebuilding. You know, French are really strong. Their villagers are really strong. Um, and we just got to make sure that nothing really happens. And look at this. This is really bad for me. Look, I, I miss the stables. Oh, no, I, I do get the stables. Ah, uh, yeah, I see it. And then I see the cav just coming off the right side here, I believe. Yeah, there it is. And I, I just I just lock them down. I think this is the worst thing here for Everett. He actually tries to go hand combat with me, but my... My coyotes would easily be able to deal with these guys really, really quickly because coyotes have just... There's so many more of them and they're doing more damage. They've got the 21% increase. They've got the coyote HP increase and speed as well. Um, it's just absolutely, absolutely nuts. So let's have a quick look at the post game. But to be honest, I don't think we really need to look at this, to be honest, guys, because it's pretty clear how strong that was. We have a look at a timeline here for age up. Now, look, I got into the age at 3 minutes 40. I think that's pretty much the quickest sieve. That's the quickest you can get in it is with Aztec. I think that's the quickest you can get into age two. 3 minutes 40. I could probably do that even quicker. But I just really enjoyed this opening. I, I love now starting with the Warrior Priest. I think it's a lot stronger. It can be a bit risky. It can be a bit risky. It's quite greedy. But if you can defend well and you can pull it off, it's, it just pays off. The dividends are amazing. If you lose some warrior priests, just put a couple of villagers onto the community plaza with the uh, with the ones that are left over and just bring them back up to 10 again. You know, it won't take too long. And um, yeah, really, really nice. So I hope you enjoyed this, guys. Let me know down in the comments below if you're going to give this a go because I really urge people to play these uncommon or unpopular sieves. I always say that in my videos. I really enjoy playing Aztec. If you love to play in age two, you love to boom, you love to just play a long age two and get stuck in, then I highly, highly recommend Aztec. Not just for this opening, but for other ones as well, for, for your rushes and stuff like that. Just a really, really fun sieve to play. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you in the next video, on the next stream. Make sure to drop a like, and I'll catch you later.